Hey guys, Project Zodiac here. I'm back with another video and this is a, another album unboxing. Um, and it's not just an album unboxing, I'm also going to give a mini review on this album. Um, the link to my actual full written review with a track by track review as well um, is going to be in the description below. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit about the concert that I just went to, which is from this actual band. Uh, but I'll do that at the very end. So as you guys can see, this is M83's newest album, and it is called Fantasy. So as you guys can also see over here, M83 limited edition blue marble double vinyl in gatefold sleeve. So I actually bought this at the concert uh, merch store that they had and I wasn't sure if I was actually going to buy this particular album physically um, just because again the vinyls are big and I've talked a lot about before how uh, the records I do want to buy is from either all-time favorite musicians of mine such as Ben Howard, Daft Punk, um, you know, uh, A Blaze of Fe Feather, things like that. Uh, even Owl City, I do want to have all of Owl City's on vinyl, but his vinyl is super expensive. I actually did just get All Things Bright and Beautiful from Owl City because they actually, thankfully, restocked it and it wasn't $400 like some of them are. Um, it was only like $35, so hopefully they can restock um, or reprint some of Owl, C Owl City's other albums um, on vinyl. But yeah, so... M83, I have three of his vinyls. Uh, one is Hurry Up, We're Dreaming, which is a classic. Uh, Junk, which is my favorite M83 album. Um, and then Digital Shades Volume 2, just basically to celebrate his return. Um, and the music in that is also fantastic. When he released Fantasy, or announced Fantasy, I was super excited for it. But I decided I was going to wait off and hear the album before I decided if I'm going to buy it or not. Because even though I like M83, and right now he is starting to become, um, I am starting to become more, uh, like, attached to his music. Um, a lot more than I used to be because I've been hearing it a lot more as well. And they always have resonated with me. But... For the past year and a half now, I've been hearing it more and more, and I would say within the past maybe seven, eight months, um, I've been hearing his music a lot more, so it's definitely been a lot more impactful on me, so I might end up buying more of his albums on vinyl, but I still wanted to hear Fantasy first to see how it is, because again, even though his music does resonate with me, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm, he's one of my all-time favorite musicians yet, <laughs> you know, it's almost there though. Um, so yeah, when Fantasy released, I was going to wait off on it, and we'll get to that a little bit later, because that's going to be part of the review, but yeah, so I decided in the end to pick this up in the venue, and um, I'll explain more about that in a little bit, so let's just get into this, so yeah, the show was actually yesterday, um, so it was pretty cool, and... Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, I decided to pick this up because every time I go to the um, to a concert, I do like to get something to re um, represent the artist and also support them. But um, I wasn't sure what they were gonna what I was gonna get there because I normally get posters from uh, merch stores, and I, I actually did get a poster, and I will show that as well. But <sighs> The, the merch that they had wasn't the best, so I was like, okay, I'll just get the vinyl because I've been thinking about getting the vinyl anyway. So, but yeah, I didn't realize this is stuck here. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is a nice matte cover. Um, I do love the fantasy logo, the like its font. It feels very 80s synth, but at the same time, very fantasy looking as well, like cheesy fantasy, um, like it makes me think of the old Legend of Zelda um, fonts and stuff like that. Um, 
also it makes me think a lot about i don't know like things from the never ending story which i love that movie series um uh, yeah it, it, like just the world of fantasia that's what fantasy the the font makes me think about and also a lot of his things from his previous album there's those shades volume two um but yeah so this is the album cover i when i first saw this cover i'm like dude what <laughs> what is up with this cover i i didn't really like the cover i still don't and i'm like this dude is kind of creepy like really creepy so these are actual eyes um around him and uh this is a, a mask that Anthony is wearing and he drew out like the design stuff which was pretty cool and um, he had it made. Uh, sometimes this creature wears like a, a black wig um, and it's like super thin black hair uh, which you can see in the music video for Ocean's Niagara. I believe that's how it's called. I'll take a look in a second. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know what he's going to be doing with this character uh because his music videos do tend to tell like a story which i love a lot um but yeah so far we've only had one music video and right now it's april and it's i, I think today's the 25th of april no today's the 24th because the 25th is tomorrow and that comes out on um yeah sorry that comes out with the xenoblade dlc uh story expansion i'm so tired so yeah, um, so the, the the first trailer, uh, the first music video released a few months ago, I think around February, and we haven't had another music video, so I don't know if we're going to get anything else with this character, but I'm assuming we would. Uh, let's go on the back again, very like poppy and synthy, I suppose. Um, so that's track 11. All right, so we've got Water Deep. So yeah, Ocean's Niagara was the first one. And just so that you guys can see here all of the songs. And yeah. So some of these songs have a really weird um, name. Oh, also, uh, this is more like right here this whole section right here that i just outlined it's like pink and then actually the whole thing is kind of pink but like this section is a little bit brighter pink compared to the rest on the camera it's picking up as red but yeah it's just like bubblegum pink in a way um but yeah there's some like really interesting um titles like disembodiment bureau and cool knew it so it's pretty interesting all right, and then here we have the credits, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that this was a gatefold, so I'm kind of curious, curious to see what's inside. Okay, so we have the alien looking thing, and then we've got some lyrics. Uh, okay, it is not lyrics. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, it's not lyrics. Interesting, it's just more credits, so that's pretty cool. Um, effects and the treatments. That's interesting. Oh, okay, so this is uh, an overview of like all the different um, instruments that he used. Uh, so yeah, he used like a lot of different instruments on this. So yeah, these are all just instruments. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at the first one. So on his actual store, um m83's actual store the, um it you could have bought this black or with a pink vinyl like a cotton candy pink vinyl and i would have gotten that over this because again this is a marble blue but i don't think i should have just because the digital shades volume 2 vinyl that i got is that same color so i don't know why they decided to go with that um, at least for his store, like the, the band store. Uh, but yeah, I think that blue will, would fit this album pretty well as well. So Ocean's Niagara, literally the only lyric that he repeats so many times is Beyond Adventure. Um, Amnesia, I, I love this song so much. 
um, us and the rest. Here's um, something I don't really understand. Deceiver. It is, you know, the title of the song is like somebody who is deceiving or lying about something. And, okay, maybe, okay, okay, okay. I just realized, so the lyrics that was on Genius was different. Um, which now means I'm going to have to go and change my review for this song, Deceiver, about what it talks about. Because this, the when I first read the lyrics, it said, everybody, um, he's my writer, but, okay, wait. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. It's been such a long day. Work was super stressful. So forget what I said. Just forget what I said. Um, so... Okay, yeah, I'm just reading this again. So yeah, I really don't understand. So yeah, I'm not going to be changing the, the, the what I wrote about this song there on my review. Uh, but I, I don't really understand why Deceiver is the name of this song. It just doesn't make any sense considering that th it's not about anyone deceiving anyone. Um, but I really like this lyric um, sheet. It's, it does make me feel like there's an uh, inside, but there isn't. Um, Laura is such a beautiful song. Sunny Boy is amazing on um, this song. But yeah, a cool new it. I don't understand the name for that. And this about a bureau. I really, really love this song. I just don't really understand why they put television. I mean, I kind of do. It's like people are always watching TV. that They kind of just let things, you know, in life pass by, I, I guess. Um, so it's like an illusion television, so that's what they're trying to say. But I, I kind of wish that they went with something else instead of television. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. We do get some lyrics. They're not very big, you know, so... Um, but they're pretty cool. All right, I'm super excited. Ooh, wow, okay. There's some, like, swirl in there. I don't know. Can you guys... Yeah, you can. you can see that right there. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm super excited about this now. Because I have not seen pictures of how this is going to look. So, hold on. Oh, wow. Okay, this is amazing. It's so shiny and reflective. Oh, this is amazing. I love this. Okay, you're seeing some purple in that but that I just realized because that's because of this it's it's transparent as you guys can see so let me move this forward but yeah so now you you can't really see that purpleness but ah oh, that metallic like yeah see like if you put that right over here like look look right over here it would have looked so cool like the different colors like shifting around like even up here as well uh, but still, wow, this is so beautiful. I'm honestly impressed with how beautiful this looks. Like, it's not, I mean, it kind of is picking up on the camera. I mean, look at that, that shift. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is definitely one of the most beautiful records I have now. And like, the way that the light moves on it, it's really reflective. When they said, like, blue marble, I was expecting it to be, um, where is it? Yeah, I was like, just expecting it to be, like, a solid blue with, like, darker blue lines around it. I wasn't expecting this. This is, like, metallic blue. And I love this so much. And it really works with the, the red. And, oh, this is so cool. I do feel like it is a bit warped, though, um. But it's fine. It shouldn't impact it too much. But wow, that's so beautiful. I'm so, so happy with this record color. All right. Okay, nothing else in there. I mean, it's going to be the same thing, but still. And I do have to get rid of these, unfortunately, even though the black fits it so well, just to protect the record. And that's so beautiful. 
I mean, just literally look at the way that the, the light moves. Like, see, look, right up here at the top. It would have been so cool if they mixed in some pink with this. This is so cool. But, yeah, so, as I was saying, I wasn't really going to get this particular album because when I first heard the album, when the album fully released, I thought it was kind of just okay. I really did not think it was his best work. Um, again, my favorite is Junk from him, um, the album Junk. But, yeah, it just really did not seem like it was the best that the best thing that represents m83 but when i um so i wrote my original review with that in mind but then at the same time that's when i started looking up the lyrics and i just really love the lyrics actually we have the lyrics right here so let's kind of go into the review real quick and then i'll quickly talk about how the concert went um so yeah for example Laura, it's such a beautiful looking, um, sorry, beautiful written song, Sunny Boy as well, um, and it really just talks about falling in love with someone, and like, you kind of talking to like a, a higher power in a way, and it's like, you know, have you ever, um, do you know what this is like, what love is, and all that stuff, and, and it, it kind of like connects because right after Laura, if you guys read my review, you'll see that I kind of saw like a little story in this um, with, that progresses from each album, sorry, from each song. And honestly, it kind of fits a little bit with what the music video was actually kind of showing just a little bit. Um, but yeah, so yeah, if you guys read my review, especially the track by track portion, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, th there was just a lot of things that I really, really loved about this and like in terms of the lyrics and it really connected with me a lot. Um, so this was about almost a month ago, I would say. And so yeah, at first I just thought it was okay, but then I started writing my review for it and I was just really, I, I kept listening to it more and more and the lyrics itself, that's when I really looked them up and I'm just like, okay, no, these lyrics are fantastic as well. Um, and it just really started to click with me. It really started to resonate so much more. And I'm like, okay, I, I do think I want to buy this on vinyl record because there's something really, really good here. Um, when the album first released, the first, he randomly released um, the first six songs. Like, he released Ocean's Niagara first, and then, like, about a month later, he released all, like, the first six songs, and I listened to them, and they were pretty cool. I just felt like there was something missing. And then when the album released, and the entire album is out, for me, definitely, even now, the first six songs are fun, but this album really, really shines with the second half of it. Uh, for example... Um, Amnesia is definitely one of his best songs ever. It's just so good. Um, but yeah, so the first six songs were great. But then we have Deceiver, which is definitely one of his best songs. We got Fantasy, which is so good instrumentally. I just wish that there was a little bit more to the lyrics. Uh, we got Laura, which is so breathtaking. Sunny Boy is fantastic. Who knew it? It's a little weird at first, but it really like grows and expands and it, it just becomes like an epic in a way. Um, Sunny Boy Part 2 is pretty good. And then this embodiment, Rero, is really good. Like it's it's so interesting how good it is. Um, but yeah, it's just a fantastic album in so many ways. It's just, even though I'm growing to love it so much more, I really don't... And, um, okay, I'll get to that in a, in a little bit. I, I just don't really think that this is his best work. Because, again, Junk is still my all-time favorite M83 album. Uh, but I do think I am liking it a lot more than a couple of his things before. Because 
when I hear this album, I do hear an accumulation of all of his different sounds and all of his different styles, including Digital Shades Volume 2. And plus its own thing as well. So he kind of hyped this up as being more of, I forgot the name of the album right now, but the one that, set, that plays guitar in a heart. Um, so I think it's his third album. Yeah, I think it's his third album. Uh, Before the Dawn Saves Us or Heals Us. I think that's the name of it. Uh, so he said that Ocean's Niagara was basically like a callback to the songs on that and that this one would be similar to that. But honestly, as this went on, yes, there's some callbacks to that album. But I heard a lot of callbacks to all of his albums, including Junk as well. So, sorry. So I really, really, really enjoy that a lot about this album in particular uh, that you see these little callbacks plus its own thing as well so I don't think it's quite his personal one sorry quite his best one yet but and this is a big but I do think it is one of his most creative ones because the instrumentation here is amazing on so many ways um Again, I'm starting to understand this album a lot more um, as I hear it. And I was going to wait until I heard it another, like, it, like in full without being distracted, like, one or two times before I decided to buy the, the, the album on vinyl. But considering I was at the concert anyway, I was like, okay, I might as well just get it because I'm already leaning towards buying the album anyway. Uh, but I still do kind of wish I have heard it another two times um, before I really decided if I wanted to get it on vinyl. But I am no longer <laughs> regretting it because that vinyl itself is so beautiful. And again, the music in here is fantastic. Um, so yeah, the more I listen to it, the more I realize where he was going with this. And the more I realize the... Um, the nature of this album and how creative it is and how fantasy it is it, it really does make me think of like an alien um like a spiritual journey with like aliens and different planets and um like fantasy realism kind of things um so it definitely takes you on a huge adventure um you know, I know that he says beyond adventure in the second song, but still, like, I, the more I listen to it, I'm just like, wow, th this, this song, this, these songs, where it takes you, the atmosphere in them, like, for example, where is it? Um, I believe it is Deceiver. Yeah, like there is like jungle beats to it and it kind of makes you feel like you're walking through a fantasy forest for a little bit at night and then it takes you to somewhere magical that's not the forest and like it just there's just so much passion in this album and I, and I can tell that even when I first heard it it's just you know I had to understand the direction it was going in because it wasn't really what I was expecting. The same can be said for Daughter's newest album, which is Stereo Mind Game, which I did already unbox, and I did give a mini review for it, and I am going to upload that right before I upload this, um, except that I did say that I wrote my review for Daughter, and I was going to put it in the link the description below. So if you guys are going to be watching that, um, turns out I only wrote two songs reviews for that, so... I uh, and I, I'm I, I've just been so stressed right now, so I'm not gonna be doing a review for that yet. I'm still gonna upload that video. I'm just gonna add in the description. Yeah, did not do the written review uh, like I thought I did, but in that video review for the new daughter album, I did say I like it. I I thought that it was the worst of daughter's albums, but I still liked it. But after I made that video unboxing of the album and the review for it, um, I heard it more and more and I really started to appreciate all those songs and those complaints that I had more. They kind of, they're kind of there, but they're like, okay, no, I understand where the band was going with this and it makes sense and I'm liking it because it works. So my thoughts on that album has been changing uh, slightly. 
I still think it's the worst of the band, but still. Same thing with um, M83. So I'm going to be uploading this after the daughter review um, and unboxing. Um, but for this one, though, I did enjoy it more than Daughter's new album um, when I first heard it. So for me, this is definitely becoming, you know, a lot more of a growth thing. Um, again, I didn't think it was terrible. I just didn't think it was his best. But now that I'm hearing it more, now that I understand the lyrics, now that I'm um, like really paying attention to the instrumentations, like I feel really invested with the album. The album is fantastic. It's still not as good as Junk, but you can tell that this is kind of personal to him. Um, so like, like you can just tell that because it's a accumulation of all his previous styles plus his own thoughts on a lot of things um and even he has said in a few interviews that he does think that this is his most personal album to date and honestly you i can feel like i feel like it's true you know um i know that he says that about every album that he makes but at the current moment i do think that this is his most personal one uh, there is just a lot of passion here. And if you guys know anything about M83, it's that with, when Midnight City released, he gained so much fame. And he kind of just wanted to take a step back. So then he released Junk, which is something totally different. And he even gave it a title that I don't understand why he gave it a, that title. And then he even gave the cover whatever those things are. They're cute, but like, I don't know. Um, and so, yeah. So then he released the Real Shades Volume 2, which is a back to basics kind of album, which is mostly atmospheric, no lyrics, no pop um, or upbeat things. And he really wanted to take away from that and just be himself. So he doesn't want to stay constrained to what made him super popular, which is Midnight City with the album Hurry Up, We're Dreaming. And I honestly really appreciate that. So when I was reading these interviews after the album came out, I'm like, I can tell how much passion this dude is putting into this project and how much of like himself he put into it as well. Um, so that helped me also really realize how well developed this album really is. Um, and then it got to a point where when I was hearing the songs, it really felt like these are classics like there's just so much good stuff here um honestly i still think oceans niagara is probably the worst song on the album um but it's not bad you know and another thing that really made me start appreciating this album even more is when the full album released you can see that many songs not all of them though but a lot of the songs do, do kind of just lead into each other um for example example water deep it leads straight into oceans niagara and it kind of made me think like i wonder how that would sound on vinyl uh because you know if you're listening to a digital album like it ends and yes you're still gonna tell that it's leading into the other one but like for literally like a millisecond you hear this song just stop in the next one beginning um so i'm like and that does kind of break away the immersion of listening to like an album in full when songs do connect to each other. Um, it's not a huge break off, but still, it's nice to just hear it as it's spinning on a record itself or like even on a CD. Um, so yeah, just listening to it digitally, it can cause that kind of break. So the fact that this album does that a few times, um, I would say maybe two or three times is really, really nice. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's definitely something that has actually been growing a lot on me. I haven't, so as of the recording of this video, I've only done the track by track review. I'm going to listen to it again and see if the score stays the same or and update them. But I haven't written the full album review, which I always put on top of my track by track review. So by the time it's uploaded that will at least be done so that's definitely going to be in the description unlike the daughter one which i apologize for eventually i'll get to that but doing a track by track review does take a long time um so yeah it's just something that has been growing a lot on me and i can definitely tell the passion that anthony has been putting 
on this album and it's definitely him being as pure as he can be and this album just hearing it like I said it does make me think about going to like um like the never ending story world of Fantasia literally like that's how it, it feels like and I know that he stays stuck in the 80s a lot um but it, it's just a part of who he is his essence you know and he wants to reflect that and a thing I love about M83 is that he comes up with these ideas and these musics that kind of resonate with me in a way and that I think about a lot too. Uh, so it's just something so creative and he, you know, I know that he doesn't want to, but he does deserve a lot more recognition than he has gotten after um, Midnight City released. So um, yeah, there, there definitely needs to be more musicians like that. Um, so yeah, I do think this is some of his best work instrumentationally, lyrically, I can definitely, I see so much creativity with the lyrics here. I do think though that there could have been a lot more to the lyrics here though, just because when it's good, these lyrics are amazing. So, um, yeah, definitely take a look at the lyrics and, you know, definitely compare it with the other ones. Um. I, I do think I still like Digital Shades Volume 2 a little bit more um, than this one. So, I don't know yet, because a lot of his music is just fantastic in general. So, I don't know where I would rank this, but definitely, probably higher than his first two albums. Even though I love those first two albums, because they're just like noise and electronics and everything. It's really good for driving at night. Uh, but definitely at least above there, because everything after their first two albums is, it's so much better, honestly. Um, so yeah, definitely at least there, but I don't know yet where I fit this in. This year, there's been a lot of new music, so I've been hearing a lot of my um, favorite bands releasing new stuff. So I haven't, again, had a full chance to really listen to this on repeat at least um, so many times just a few times and the few times that I have it's really been growing on me and I've really been understanding it a lot so yeah I don't know yet how I will rank this but I can definitely appreciate this album so much more now and I do really love some of these songs like some of these songs are definitely some of his best music uh, for sure just in general I'm just I know it sounds very contradictory when I say, well, you're saying that some of these songs are some of his best, but you're saying that the album is not the, the best. Um, I'm talking about album narrative and album like structure and how it feels to listen to the whole thing together in one big thing. Because ranking individual songs is one thing, but when you're looking at a, a, an album as a whole, it's a different aspect. So again, album-wise, I, I can definitely... I've been growing to it album-wise. Song-wise, the, some of these songs are some of his best. Like, even when I first heard the, the, the album as a whole, like, some of the songs are some of his best. But album-wise, I've been growing on it. That's what I'm trying to explain. And, yeah, it's been growing on me a lot. I really, really like this album so far. Um, like, a lot more than I did when I first heard it, so... It's just so cool. So yeah, I'm kind of glad I do get it now. Um, and I'm glad that I got it on vinyl. And yeah, check out my written description, uh, my written review in the description below. It's going to be my Google Docs page. You will see the full album review. Again, album review, not song by song review. Just album as a whole review. And then underneath all of that, you will see the song by song review. Um, so yeah. And before I go off, I just also wanted to say, so I went to watch M83 live. And it was the first time I went to see him play live. Um, given how everything I've just described about my journey with this particular album, I was looking forward to it because this is probably also the closest I'm going to get to going to a Daft Punk concert since unfortunately they retired unless they decide to do like a one-off tour or something like that which is always possible I have hope um but yeah I, I never really saw any shows of him being live or anything like that and I was just kind of excited you know I mean 
I had to leave my house really early at like 8 a.m. to do some stuff and I was going to go from the errands I was doing straight to the concert so I wasn't even going to come home um and the concert started like I think the door is open at 7 p.m. unfortunately I kind of forgot uh my charger in the car so when I noticed that my phone was at six percent sorry 60 percent around like 3 p.m. um I kind of was like crap I, I gotta figure this out but I can't go charge my phone now because I can't go to my car at the moment. Um, and then, you know, I got I, I got dropped off at the, the concert venue and I was alone and I was going to have to take an Uber home. And I still had to record many things from the concert. So anyway, so we'll get to that. I was basically just trying to, um, yeah trying to figure out a way how that was going to work but as the you know so I never really saw him play live maybe like a song or two I had in the past but not really I don't really remember them that much so I looked up some of the set lists for the fantasy tour and it seemed very repetitive as in the sense like every set list is basically the same with like maybe one song being different so I'm like, okay, at least I know what to expect. It definitely was mostly songs from fantasy. And I'm like, all right, at least, you know, one song that I love so much from M83, which is Solitude, is going to be on there. Midnight City is going to be there. Wait is going to be there. And Outro is going to be there. So there was a lot of songs that was in every single show that I could see. So I'm like, all right, I know to at least expect these old songs and those old songs are some of my all-time favorite songs like wait solitude um those two songs are songs i listen to so much um and of course midnight city is the, the classic um but i was just very curious you know like how is it gonna be so let me look up some tr um, videos of people posting it and the audiences in some of those shows that i saw uh, and again, this is specifically about the fantasy tour. They weren't dancing so much, I, I didn't think. And like some of the videos that I saw was just kind of seemed uh, kind of boring. Um, but I'm like, I know I'm going to have fun because there's still going to be some things that I love a lot um, about the show. And again, it's the closest I'm going to get to Daft Punk. So I'm, I'm going to go. So I went, got the merch, which again, I'll, I'll show this off in a minute. Um, and then thankfully I was there early enough that I was able to stay like right in front of like the, the stage. Um, it was, um, general mission. So it was just the floor. Uh, th there was balconies, but I like to be close to the stage when I can. So there was like three people right in front of me. Um, so I was still pretty close to the, like the stage, you know, but there was just like a row of like, like three rows in front of me. But yeah, I was still very close, especially because everyone kind of pushed forward. Um, and then they started. Um, the opening act made me think about uh, Jean Machar Jar. Um, I think I said his name right, but he's one of Daft Punk's influences. Uh, he made the Oxygen trilogy out of albums. So I definitely recommend listening to those if you like really alien sounding atmospheric things. Um, but yeah, so Jean Machar Jar did a fantastic job in you know those musics from like literally the 70s so yeah the opening act made me think of Jean Machar Jar um and so he was yeah the opening act was pretty good and then we get into M83 and again my phone is is on like 50 something percent now and it's already like nine o'clock and I'm like how is this gonna like please god please let this um phone survive let me record everything and I'll worry about calling the uber later um and literally like that that's what was going through on my mind um so when the the music the the band started and I was having fun. They opened up with Ocean's Niagara and then they transitioned into um sorry they opened up with waters deep and then they transitioned into oceans niagara and then uh, there was another song forgot but for yeah the first like three four songs i was having fun and i'm, I'm like oh yeah this is really nice this is pretty cool this is really creative but then after that 
it, like I got so invested in the music and so invested in like the atmosphere and just so invested in like the lights and just seeing some of these songs that I loved so much from this album in particular being played live and it even made me like really say like yeah no these songs sound amazing live just as they do on the actual album itself um and then by the time that we got towards like the so yeah that that's the middle part the middle part was having like a lot of fun then we got towards the ending part like the last like maybe five ish six to seven sorry um six to five songs of the main set and that's when they included weight um solitude and they played weight and solitude back to back <laughs> i even remember i'm like all right so they're gonna play so they're playing weight now and then weight was ending and i'm like please play solitude next please play solitude next because in the few of the set list i saw they put a different song in between weight and solitude but i'm like please play solitude next because my phone is now on 20 percent and i need to record this so yeah i was recording um about a minute and a half to two minutes of each song and taking pictures as well and I'm like, please, I gotta get weight on, um, sorry, I, I really gotta get solitude on this. And thankfully, it, they played it right after, so I thought that that was really cool. And they did a different rendition of, um, solitude, which was actually pretty good. I liked how they went with it. Um, and then I'm like, all right, now I just need Midnight City, because I gotta record that. Um... And then they, they, you know, they finish things up. But yeah, the, the, like the last like five songs was like super other than Wait and um, other than Wait and Solitude. Like the last few songs was some more older stuff along with Sunny Boy 1 and 2 um, from this album. And they they were so energetic as well and like almost like a rave style because again, it was some things from um saturdays equals youth some things from um before the dawn heals us so they, they actually played a good amount of different songs from their other stuff at my show and i was like super excited for it again it was mostly still fantasy music um but they did play a, a little bit more i think from some of the other songs than the set list that i saw so i was kind of happy with that because it, it was like a really good perfect balance honestly and then they left and then the encore came and then the encore was just straight out like just all older stuff. So I believe they had, um, I forgot the one right before Midnight, the, like I, I think they played two right before Midnight City. And then they played two before Midnight City, then Midnight City, and then they played Mirror and then they played Outro. And that whole like encore was just straight out like a rave it was just so fun not saying that the rest of the stuff wasn't like a rave it was like a rave it was really really cool um but it wasn't like just noise you know it was more complex um electronic music which is one of the good things about this album but again i do like to go back to the earlier stuff because it's just electronic noise which is really cool um but yeah, then the ending, like the end, like the encore was just amazing. Um, and then by the encore, I'm just like, no, keep playing music, keep playing music. Um, not because they were playing older songs, it's just because the atmosphere was so good. And honestly, like there was so much lights everywhere. And they had like the the design of, um, how can I say, like the, 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 there was like this light thing in between it. And it kind of makes me think of the doctor who's tardis like it, it, it looks organic but like alien at the same time and it, it just looks so cool um so yeah their set design looked so so cool and that brought in the atmosphere and it kept like lighting up changing colors and um shooting rainbow colors all over the place um and just like glowing many different colors so yeah i definitely recorded a lot of them i was thinking about including it here at the end of this video but i'm not going to just because i'm gonna have to edit that in and i'm just really not in the mood to do editing right now because i've been very busy and stressed so um so yeah it was just fantastic it was amazing um and yeah, by the end of it, I'm just like, this is definitely one of the best concerts I've ever been to. 
so again, I started it, the concept was just like not expecting so much, but you know, since knowing I was gonna have fun, but then by like the middle of it, I, I was already like, this concert is amazing, and then by the end, I'm like, this is definitely one of the best concerts I've ever been to. So, yeah, I can't wait to go and see M83 again. Hopefully, he goes on tour soon again because this was fantastic. The The music on this album played live as well was so groovy, so hypnotic, so dreamlike as well. It was fantastic. I like the images right behind the band. It, it kept like switching to different planets and stuff like that. And oh, it was just so good. I loved that concert so much. Um, and then my phone died right when they finished playing outro literally like the last few keys came and then they finished it and then five seconds later five to ten seconds later my phone dies so I'm like thank you god because my phone survived allowing me to record everything i i mean like like i said one a minute to like a minute to like two minutes of it the longest ones i did record was definitely wait solitude and Midnight City. Midnight City is the only one I recorded fully. Um, Wait, I recorded about half of it. And then Solitude, I also recorded about half of it as well. Um, But yeah, so those three I recorded the most. But yeah, it was just amazing. And then I thought it was funny because thankfully I had my charger with me. So I had to plug it in on the hallway towards the bathroom and charge it and then it's just a sea of people moving and I'm like hurry up phone charge because I gotta call my uber and then you know I'm just there waiting and waiting and waiting and then the security starts telling people to like start moving and I'm like all right my phone's at eight percent um you know I should be able to at least call the uber so I went on the uber except that the uber was eighty dollars for some reason which makes no sense because, like, my house wasn't even far away from the venue. <laughs> so, um, it was $80. I'm like, let me check Lyft. And then Lyft was, like, $35. I'm like, great, there's five Lyft drivers here. Let me go with them. But it would not, no, like, no one would pick up my, the request at all. <laughs> and then my phone goes from 8% to, like, 5%. I'm like, crap. No, it, it went from 8% to, like, 6%. I'm like, crap. All right, screw Lyft. I'm going to go with Uber. I'm going to have to pay the ridiculous fee. But thankfully, at that point, the um, Lyft price, the Uber price did go down a little bit, even though this was like 10-ish, 15-ish minutes later. And I got that ride for about $54 to $57, which is still super expensive. And um, and then my phone was at 5% and it was about to become 4%. So it was between 5 and 4%. And my Uber driver arrived. I'm so grateful I got in that car and my my phone was still alive. Um, so yeah, it was definitely one of the best concerts I ever had. I even felt bad for the Uber driver. She, because um, we were talking about the the concert, she was like, "Oh, was, I guess you were in the show. Was it good?" I'm like, "Yeah," and I explained it a little bit. Um, and I'm like, yeah, it was good, but my phone's dying right now. So thank you for arriving before it died. So now I can charge it. I didn't charge it in the car, you know, but I was heading home. So it was fine. Um, and I ended up telling her, like, um, you know, it was kind of messed up, though, how much the, the price is considering, you know, like, it's not supposed to be expensive right now. It's late at night and we're not anywhere that's going to be super expensive so i don't know why it was almost 80 dollars. and then she like freaked out and she's like you're paying 80 dollars for this short ride because again my house is close to that venue and i'm like thankfully no <laughs> thankfully it came down to 54 and then she's like okay but you're still paying 54 dollars for this super short ride and i'm like yep and when i say it's super close i mean it's like 10 sorry like 15 to 20 minutes away uh to the venue and she was like, what the hell? And I'm like, right? And she's like, yeah, no, that's messed up. But it's also messed up because Uber is only giving me $25 out of this $54 ride. And I'm like, what? And then she explained to me the breakdown. So she was annoyed by that. <laughs> I felt so bad for her. So I gave her a little bit more of a tip because, yeah, I just felt so bad. Because I have heard a lot of like things about how Uber rips people off. So the fact that she was only getting like $20, $25 from that, it was really messed up. So... 
But yeah, that is my story for attending M83's concert, and it was pretty cool. Let me just uh, unwrap this, and then we'll end the video. Okay, so, um, so this year we've got Ecstasis. I forgot how to say the name of this. Uh, but first of all, like this is what I mean. Like this is the kinds of vibes that M83's music gives. At least the this album and Digital Shades Volume Two does. Um, so yeah, like it just makes me think of like Never Ending Story, uh, Fantasia kind of vibes. Uh, so this is a really, really cool poster, honestly. But my biggest complaint with this is that this was the only tour poster that he had. And again, I love it. It's a really cool, weird poster. But my complaint with this is that this was stuff f like based on the music videos from the previous album, The Real Shades Volume 2. So, which is super weird, but I love it. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure why they went with this as a poster for the fantasy tour. I don't know if M83 went on tour for Digital Shades Volume 2. I don't think he did. Um, so if he didn't, that would explain this, but... Which is fine, but I'm not sure if maybe this is just leftover stock. Um, so yeah, I don't remember, I don't even really remember. I don't think that this was sold on his web store either, I don't think so during the Digital Chase Volume 2 era. But yeah, th that is my little complaint about this. I do wish it was something related to fantasy or even like the tour dates poster, which is what I usually get, but they don't, they didn't have that. Um, so this was the only poster, but again, it's a beautiful, really cool, weird poster. It's just, and yes, it does definitely fit the vibes of this album a lot, but it was made with the characters in the story from the previous album. So, yeah, it's not bad though. But yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I rambled on for about an hour. Um... Yeah, I mean, again, I can let this slide just because it does feel the same vibes. Um, but I do wish that we got like a fantasy tour poster. But it's cool. Sorry, I forgot. I was going to say something else along those lines, but I forgot what it was. But I hope that you guys enjoy this. Um, the Real Shades Volume 2 is fantastic. It's a, it's a great album for sure. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of M83's, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm so tired, <laughs> M83's newest album, Fantasy. Uh, what do you guys think about it? Do you agree with my thoughts? Let me know your concert stories as well. So yeah, guys, really come and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.